If you use universal audio plugins, this is probably the most annoying thing that could happen in the middle of a mixing session. But guess what? UAD Spark might have just solved this problem. My name is El Marquis, musician, rapper, record producer, understand cross follower, and here's my review of UAD Spark. El Historically, if you wanted to use Universal Audio's plugins, you would have to own either an Apollo interface or one of the satellites. Their plugins would run off of the Apollo's DSP rather than your computer's CPU, which means that your session files would run smoother, especially if you have a slower computer. This was a big selling point for their interfaces, especially if you did have a really slow computer. And while this is a powerful feature, the biggest downside to this is that if you want to use their plugins, you have to be connected to your Apollo at all times. And if you're mixing on the go and if you don't have access to your Apollo, that also means that you can't use their plugins, which really can be a major inconvenience to you. Also, since now that computers are a lot faster than how they were when the Apollo originally came out, this caused a lot of UAD's customers to request for their plugins to also be able to be run off of their computer's CPU power. And now Universal Audio has finally answered that request. Recently, Universal Audio launched UAD Spark, which is a subscription service that allows you to use their plugins natively for only $20 a month. You can actually have a 14 day free trial. And right now they do have a limited selection of plugins, but they do plan on adding more of the plugins as time goes on. As you can see over here, it's an evolving collection. As a part of the service, you'll get exclusive of new instruments and tools to their ever-expanding library. And the coolest thing about this that everyone's talking about right now is that the UAD Spark plugins will run natively on your computer, which means that you don't need to own an Apollo interface. And right now it's only available on Mac and is expected to be available on Windows in this upcoming fall. And no matter if you're using the DSP version of their plugins or the native version of their plugins, you're still going to get the exact same sound that you're used to hearing from UAD. So as of today, these are the plugins that are included with UAD Spark, which is the Teletronics LA 2A collection, which I love, the UA1176, collection, also fire, the API bus compressor, the Lexicon reverb, the pure plate reverb, the Galaxy Tape Echo, the API vision strip, the Studer tape machine, the Neve 1073 preamp, which everyone loves, and you'll get a handful of virtual instruments, the UAD Spark exclusive Opal Morphing Synthesizer, the Rabble Grand Piano, the Moog Mini Moog, as well as the Waterfall Beat 3. So basically you'll be getting all of the essential plugins that you need to knock out a mix. And Universal Audio does have a lot more plugins than just this, they do plan on adding more to the service in the future, but I do like how they added the essentials these are some of their most popular plugins and it pretty much does come with the essentials that you need to get a pro sounding mix so i haven't subscribed to uad spark but one of the coolest things about this service is that if you already own the dsp versions of their plugins that are included with uad spark you actually get the native version of it for free so for an example here's the dsp version of the neve 1073 and here's the native version of the same plugin and as you can see they look almost exactly the same the only noticeable difference i see is that the copy and paste buttons are in different places and no matter if you're running it on the dsp power of your apollo interface or the native power of your computer, they will sound exactly the same. And just to demonstrate this, I pulled a drum loop in the Logic Pro. It's the exact same drum loop. The only difference is that the one in green has the DSP version of the Neve 1073 and the pink version has the native version of the plugin. And also both plugins have the exact same settings on them just to verify. Go over here, hit copy settings, go over here and click paste. So I'm going to switch back and forth between the two drum loops and let me know if you hear a difference. To hear a difference let me know in the comment section below here's what i like about uad spark as it is today even though you can't fully disconnect from your apollo interface especially if you use plugins that are not currently included in uad spark i do like that you now have the option to choose between using the apollo's dsp power as well as your computer's cpu and if you already own an apollo and plan on using it long term you don't have to choose between either running your plugins natively or off of the dsp you can actually use them in conjunction with each other for example if you max out on your apollo's dsp you can continue mixing with the same plugins on your computer cpu alternative if you notice that your computer CPU is starting to be worn down a bit, you can offload some of that power to your Apollo's DSP. I use the Neve 1073, the LA2A, the 1176, and the Suter in most of my mix. And even with the quad core Apollo, I do occasionally max out on DSP, especially if I'm working on a bigger project. I love that I now have the option to choose to run my UAD plugins on either my Apollo or my computer. And especially since UAD's plugins are a bit pricier than most of their other competitors, I'm glad that they're giving you access to their native plugins for free if you already own the DSP version. Also, it's amazing that their plugins sound exactly the same no matter if you're using the DSP version of the plugin or the native version. I haven't tested them enough to see how much of a strain they put on my computer, but if you do have a faster computer, especially if it's one of the newer M1 Mac, I'm fairly sure your computer can handle the strain. 
I love using my Universal Audio Apollo Twin, and I definitely plan on using both the DSP plugins as well as the native plugins in conjunction with each other. But with that being said, there are some things that can be improved upon in the future. Rather than having one version of the plugin that's DSP and a separate version that's native, I wish there was a way for your computer to automatically detect when you're out of DSP and then have the plugins automatically switch over to being run off of your computer CPU. As it currently stands, if you're working on a mix where you use the DSP plugins and then if you're on the go and if you're not connected to your Apollo interface, the only way to get the plugins to continue working is by opening up an instance of the native version of the plugin and then copying and pasting the settings. And that can be really time consuming, especially if you have multiple instances of DSP plugins. Also, while they are working on adding more of the plugins to UAD Spark, right now with the limited amount of plugins that are on there, especially since the ones that are on there are the more popular plugins, some people may not see the value in paying for $20 a month for the service. It was a smart decision to include their most popular plugins first, but if you're someone who owns most of these plugins already, and if you don't plan on using the additional plugins that are included in UAD Spark, you may not be getting a lot out of it as it is today. For example, Slate Digital has a really similar service where for 20 bucks a month, you can use over 60 of their own plugins. And on top of that, that subscription service comes with pro demo sessions, tutorials from professional audio experts, and even custom samples. I haven't tried out this service for myself, nor have I used a lot of Slate Digital's plugins, so I can't really compare the quality of either service. But on paper, it does look like you're getting more value from Slate Digital's subscription service in comparison to Universal Audio's. Overall, do I think UAD Spark is worth the money? If you already own most of the plugins that are included with UAD Spark, and if you don't see yourself using the other ones that are also included, you may want to hold off on paying for the subscription service right now. Especially since you'll be getting the native versions of the plugins you already own for free, then it may not be worth it. If you don't already own any Universal Audio plugins, and if you don't already have an Apollo interface, and if you want to get involved in their ecosystem, then UAD Spark may actually be worth it for you. Some of their individual plugins can cost over $149, so if you want to have access to the essentials, as well as hopefully all of their plugins later down the line, and if you don't mind paying a subscription fee, there's a good chance that you'll be happy with the service. I personally think it'll be more worth subscribing to UAD Spark after they start adding more plugins to the program. Overall, I do think UAD Spark is a step in the right direction, and I'm looking forward to seeing how the service evolves. Thank you for watching this video. If you like what you've seen today, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you know whenever I upload new videos. Also, be sure to visit my website, lmarkeyproductions.com, where you'll be able to check out my music, my beats, my sample kits, my merchandise, and my mixing, mastering, and consulting services. And now go down in the comment section below and let me know, do you think UAD Spark is worth it? My name is Elmar Key, Elmar Key Productions. God bless.